Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss a very simplified version on anatomy of stomach. Very commonly asked question and very important if you are planning surgeries on stomach. So just the very basics, we know stomach has two curvatures, the lesser curvature and the greater curvature. The greater ones on the outer side, lesser curves on the inside. Lesser curvature gives attachment to the lesser omentum and greater curvature gives attachment to the greater omentum. So, very basic anatomy. The stomach has two surfaces, the anterior or the anterior superior surface if you are looking in actual anatomical terms and posterior or the posterior inferior surface. The two ends, there is the cardiac end of the stomach, which is the upper or the cranial end and the pyloric end, which is the lower end towards the duodenum, right? Two curvatures as we have already seen and L1 is a transpyloric plane as all of you know. Pylorus is Greek for gatekeeper. So, very commonly asked question, transpyloric plane is L1. So, very basic, okay? Going into details, the parts of the stomach, as we know from the esophagus, once it enters the abdomen, starts the cardia, right? So, the first part of stomach is the cardia, okay? Above the cardia, where it ends, the esophagus bends and this bend is the angle of his, also known as incisura cardialis, okay? If you draw a line from this incisura cardialis horizontally, the part of the stomach above this is the fundus, okay? So, the fundus is the second part of the stomach. We have already seen the cardia or the cardiac sphincter as it is also known, okay? And incisura cardialis, which is the angle of his, okay? The tip of the fundus is at the fifth intercostal space. So, many times that is why the patient may have bloating due to gaseous distension of the stomach, but that is mimicking a cardiac event, right? Because the tip of the stomach or the fundus is at the level of the fifth intercostal space. Now, just like incisura cardialis at the upper end, there is incisura angularis, which you can see on the lesser curve. The area above this is the body of the stomach. This can be measured as roughly 2 by 5 from the sphincter on the lesser curve and 1 by 8 of the sphincter on the greater curve, okay? So, the upper part of the body will be 3 by 5 in the lesser curve. So, if you divide the lesser curve into 5 parts, the 3 parts are in body and 2 parts are in pylorus. And from greater curve, if you divide it into 8 parts, one of those parts is in the pylorus below the incisura angularis. There is also another distinct area in the stomach but not clearly visible when you are doing surgeries is the sulcus intermedius but if you can identify this area anatomically the pyloric sphincter lies beyond the sulcus intermedius. Okay. So, pyloric sphincter is a true sphincter. If you want to identify the pyloric sphincter you have the pre-pyloric vein of Mayo which serves as a landmark. The other parts in the pylorus are pyloric antrum, which is in between these two lines, the one line that is formed by joining two-fifth of lesser curve and one by eight of the greater curve from the pyloric sphincter, okay? And the other line, which is towards the lesser curve from sulcus intermedius, okay? So that part is the pyloric antrum, which is roughly three inches in size. And you have pyloric canal, which in adults is roughly one inch in size. Okay. So, if you are asked parts of stomach, you have to talk in terms of the cardia, which is the beginning of the stomach, then the incisura cardialis, fundus, which is part above the angle of his, the tip of which is at the fifth intercostal space, body of the stomach, divide the lesser curve into five parts and greater curve into eight parts. The Lower two parts form pylorus or the pyloric sphincter, which is the terminal end of pylorus. And you have two important parts in this area or the pyloric part of stomach, which is pyloric antrum and pyloric canal, which are separated by sulcus intermediates. Okay. 
now coming to blood supply of stomach as we know the major supply to the stomach comes from the celiac axis so the left gastric artery is usually the direct branch from celiac axis then the splenic artery and the common hepatic artery now common hepatic artery grieves the right gastric artery separately and the gastroduodenal artery which is a branch of the common hepatic artery gives rise to right gastroepiploic artery okay so rgea is right gastroepiploic artery which is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery and right gastric artery is usually the direct branch of right hepatic artery or common hepatic artery proper hepatic artery usually will not give a branch to the stomach unless the right gastric artery has an anomalous origin short gastric arteries are 5 to 7 in number and they arise from the splenic artery so does the left gastroepiploic artery so four major branches the left gastric and the right gastric artery and the right gastroepiploic and the left gastroepiploic artery the short gastric arteries are 5 to 7 in number the anastomotic area between the left and the right gastroepiploic artery is known as the arc of Barco. Very commonly asked question. Coming to venous drainage, the veins follow the arteries, so they are named similarly, but the drainage is different, and this is where the portal circulation will also come into play. Like I said, the prepyloric vein of Mayo is an important landmark where you can identify the pyloric sphincter in the OT. The right gastric vein is where the prepyloric vein usually drains. Okay, Left and right gastric veins usually drain into the portal vein, whereas the left gastroepiploic vein and the short gastric veins drain into the splenic vein. The right gastroepiploic vein drains into the superior mesenteric vein. So, most of the venous drainage of stomach goes into the portal circulation, right? And that is why in portal hypertension, you can see gastric varices as well, okay? So, that is the clinical significance of knowing the venous drainage of stomach. So, arterial drainage and the venous drainage. Prepyloric vein of Mayo is very commonly asked question. Arc of Barco is commonly asked question, okay? Now, going to lymph node stations, this is a very important topic when you are planning surgeries for carcinoma stomach and you have to know which lymph nodes to remove in which type of surgery. We have a separate video on D1, D2 gastrectomy. So, if you want, you can have a look at it. But basically, in lymph node stations, you have to remember that there are two parts in it, the perigastric nodes, which are easier to remember, and the other nodes from 7 to 16, these are very important nodes when you want to understand the staging of carcinoma stomach as well as planning surgeries for carcinoma stomach. The ones which are marked in red here, the common hepatic node, the HDL node and the periaortic group, commonly asked questions in exam. Okay. So, starting with the perigastric nodes, you can see it is right and left cardiac, then lesser and greater curve and then supra and infra pyloric. So, easy to remember the perigastric nodes, they are numbered. Numbers basically were from the Japanese gastric cancer staging system, which have also now been taken up by AJCC. Okay. So, perigastric nodes, right and left cardiac, lesser and greater curve, suprapyloric and infrapyloric. Coming to the other numbers, these are more in relation to the vessels. So, left gastric artery, then the common hepatic artery, then the celiac axis. So, if you see our blood supply chart in reverse direction, Left gastric, common hepatic, celiac. So, 7, 8 and 9 are that. 10 and 11 are splenic hilum nodes. So, splenic hilum and splenic artery. 12 is very commonly as you can have 12A, 12P and 12D if you want to separate artery, vein and duct. But basically, they are the hepatoduodenal ligament nodes. So, 12 is hepatoduodenal ligament nodes. 13 is retropancreatic. 14 is root of mesentery. 15 is colic and 16 is periaortic. okay? So, this basic you should remember when the lymph node drainage of stomach is asked. Further, drainage areas in stomach are divided into four parts. The drainage area one is the left gastric which drains into the celiac axis nodes and these drain further into cisterna, chile, thoracic duct if you remember your anatomy classes. 
Second group is the right gastroepiploic nodes. Third group is the pancreaticosplenic nodes. Fourth group is the right gastric nodes. And a small part of the second group, which is the pyloric nodes, okay? All of the nodes basically will reach the celiac axis nodes finally to drain into the cisterna chile, okay? Based on the lymphatic drainage and the stations that we described, the nodal staging has been given by AJCC TNMA 8th edition, where N1 is 1 to 2 regional lymph nodes, N2 is 3 to 6 regional lymph nodes, and N3 is 7 or more. You also have 3A and 3B, which is 7 to 15 and 16 or more lymph nodes. To know the details of what to call regional and what not to call regional, you need to understand the types of gastrectomies, which is beyond the scope of an anatomy lecture. But you have to understand that you have to remember these lymph nodes if you want to operate on stomach, if you want to understand how the disease spreads from stomach. Okay. Now coming to now supply, again a very important topic if you want to understand the surgeries for peptic ulcer, surgeries, vagotomies, drainage, okay, all those surgeries depend on now supply to the stomach. Very simple, sympathetic is T6 to T10 spinal segments through the greater splanchnic nerves and the celiac and hepatic plexus. Sympathetic, as we know, is fight or flight response. So at that time, the vasomotor supply is strong. Pain perception will also be there, but it is motor to pyloric sphincter and inhibitory to rest of the musculature. So sympathetic basically looks at giving rest to the GI system and diverts the blood supply to the peripheries for fight and flight. Coming to the other now supply, the parasympathetic and the motor, the vagus basically gives a hepatic branch and a celiac branch. So there are two vagus as we know left and right. Left predominantly gives the anterior vagus and right predominantly gives the posterior vagus. Okay. So in left vagus becomes the anterior and right vagus becomes the posterior, but both have fibers from both left and right. Right. Coming to anterior vagus now, it gives a hepatic branch which gives a pyloric branch supplying the pyloric sphincter and a celiac branch which gives supply to the celiac plexus. After this, it gives the anterior nerve of lateral jet which gives multiple anterior gastric nerves, right? So this is the supply of anterior vagus. Like I said, anterior vagus receives most of the fibers from left vagus. On the other hand, the posterior vagus receives a lot of fibers from the right vagus, okay? And it gives a celiac branch which supplies the celiac plexus, but it has no hepatic branch. So that is one difference. Second is that it also gives the posterior nerve of lateral jet which supplies the posterior gastric nerves. Very important from surgery as well as exam point of view is that there is a supply to fundus from the posterior vagus, which is known as the criminal nerve of Grassi. And it is known as the criminal nerve of Grassi because this nerve arises separately from the rest of the nerves of lateral jet and gastric nerves. And if this nerve is missed during surgery, the symptoms or the benefit of the vagotomy will not be complete if you are doing a selective vagotomy. We will discuss the vagotomy aspect of anatomy in a separate video where we are discussing surgeries based on anatomy. But for this video, you have to understand that the criminal nerve of Grassi is a branch of posterior vagus. Another important question is posterior vagus is most of the right vagus now, whereas anterior vagus is most of the left vagus now. Right. So this is very simplified anatomy of stomach with blood supply as well as lymphatic drainage and now supply. So understand that whenever you are asked a question on anatomy, the parts of the organ, the relations and its blood supply with both artery vein, lymph nodes and nerves, all these components form a single answer. Right. So that is what you have to understand. In the next part of this video, we will look at the lesser sac, the relations of stomach and how this area becomes very important when you are doing surgeries in the abdomen. Thank you.